I'm curious on the distribution part. I think the last time we had you on was during the strike, yes. and you were trying to get people to the table together. It's amazing what the business has gone through in a year. Does Netflix, the, the, the what, what's happened in the playoffs with sports, has it changed your priorities when it comes to distribution? Uh, in, in what way? And, oh, for instance, you're working on Smashing Machine, right? You've yes. got some May 24 stuff going. Does it? Do you? Is your calculus different now about where you'd want to see it placed in the distribution chain? Is his agent uh, talking? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, yes. I, you know, you have your finger on the pulse. You like to try to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening as you look around. Things are happening so quickly and so rapidly. And uh, it, it's constantly evolving and it's constantly forcing us to figure out where is the best home for the particular project. You know, I would say to you, there are movies that are supposed to be theatrically released, and then there are movies that are supposed to be streaming. And that is the conversation we have, and we have with all of our clients, but on the, on the representation side, all the time. Does it have theatricality that it can go to the theaters, or is this best served um, in streaming? And that's just a process that you go through all the time. It's the same thing. Are you going to sell this to a linear player? Or are you going to sell this to a streamer but is it in, about, the, in the television business? Is it about IMAXification? Is it about sort of scale and grandeur, Oppenheimer? Or is there something else in that mix? No, it's just like what you think is a theatrical movie that has the, the reach of that um, of that product. Yes, and that the, the audiences can enjoy it yeah. in the theater. But also, does it have the ability to draw butts in the seats? And what we're finding is, you know, you have a movie like Oppenheimer, which you just mentioned, which completely, uh, you know, took over all the Oscar nods this morning. Congratulations, Emily Blunt and everybody there. But also, you know, that was a movie, if you think on paper, this is going to be a tough sell. It feels like it's going to be a tough one. I don't know how big of a bet we're going to put on this one. And then all of a sudden it does a billion dollars and it's sweeping the Oscars. And it was an incredible experience in theaters with Christopher Nolan leading the charge. So yeah. you never know. That's how unpredictable things could be. I'm not sure about that. In what way? Because when you're in it, I watch you. I think you're, back, you're the most bankable pre person I watch. And if I knew that Disney had done a 10, a 10 movie deal with you, that stock goes to 120. That's what Disney lacks. They lack that family fun that you bring. And I am, yes, I am flattering you because my Thank wife you, says that Dwayne is on and we watch it. And I end up watching it even right. when I didn't think I should. Why? Because you are Jim, the family fun guy. Jim, I will say the following. He's doing Smashing Machine, right? And guess what? We're in conversations for a couple of situations at, at, Disney. <laughs> at, at, at Disney. Well, I want yeah. Disney stock. My Chapel Trust owns it. If I, It goes to 110, not because of Nelson Peltz, but because of Dwayne. Because you represent a, something about our country that everybody wants to win. And you win in a way, look, it's not like a shoot 'em up. Like, I, you know, there's a lot sure. of things that I can't watch with my kids and my sure. wife. When you're on, everybody watches. I want to compliment you because that doesn't happen. I know you must demand that it cannot be just... You're not going to be in Scarface 2. <laughs> not Scarface 2, no. Uh, but thank you for that. I, I really appreciate that. I, I in a great position where we can, in many ways, call the shots. But also, what a responsibility it is for us. If people are going to pay their hard-earned dollars to get to theaters, you want to send them yes. home happy. And that is truly the bottom line. Send them home happy. Another responsibility is being a fiduciary on a public board. Is it your first time on a public board? First time, yes. So you know you have to hold him accountable, right? Yeah, I do, yes, <laughs> I have been. So are you ready for it? I've been holding him accountable for 20 <laughs> years. This is why we've been succeeding. He's just been holding me accountable, yes. Uh, any expectations in terms of serving on a public company board, given it is a new experience for you? Um, I, I'm excited, uh, you know, and I'm always looking to grow. I, I like to say that I'm a builder of things and I enjoy building. Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But with something like this, uh, everything that I do do and everything that I do touch, there is usually, not usually, there 100% is uh, a deeper meaning to it. So joining this board, I have been asked to join other boards in the past. Yeah. Joining this board was unique and different and special in that, again, I'm sitting at a board that my grandfather and my dad helped build and also help building a company and growing it globally with a global footprint with a guy who I love and admire. And yeah. I love building with him too You know, as well. the funny thing is the, the family tree that he has, and he said it recently, wrestling built him. He also built it and his family built it. That, our, that TKO and his family can come together and kind of their branches meet up now. So special.